New Year's resolution. Everybody makes them. Everybody makes New Year's resolutions. They got a whole list of stuff what they're going to do. Your New Year's resolution this year should be to have some new clothes. Ladies, don't get all excited about shopping for new clothes. These are spiritual clothes that only can come from heaven. Amen? That word resolution... That word resolution is the act or process of resolving something or breaking it up into parts and elements, the result of the process, and resolving or determining, deciding the thing to be determined upon, a decision as to a future action, resolve. See, when you, when you make a resolution, are you determining something? You determine your future. Yeah, not God. He wrote it out for you. He made heaven for you. But you determine your journey. He's got a journey for you that He predetermined for you. That He ordained before the foundation of the world. But you choose. You make a determination inside of you. You have a resolve inside of you to fulfill your destiny. Because that eliminates you from the process other than being obedient to God and having ears to hear what the Spirit would lead you and guide you. How God wants to use you for His purposes. Amen? It's a, re a resolute quality of mind. That means you can't be swayed. That's why it says in James, don't be double-minded because that makes you unstable. If God calls you to something and you determine in your heart, God, I'm going to fulfill my destiny by Thy great grace and Holy Spirit as you take me there... But then all of a sudden you get halfway there and you start making your own plans. <coughs> Guess what? You shipwreck what God wanted to do with you. You must settle it in your heart and determine it in your heart and mind that, Lord, I'm going to have a resolute quality of mind that I'm not going to allow my mind to be changed from what you've told me. So that my mind and my heart are lined up with your plans and not mine. A New Year's resolution should be a totally devoted life to Christ and to Christ alone. Because if you make that your resolution, the rest will fall into place. And that resolution alone is going to carry you through this year. This is going to be the most exciting times in the history of humanity. Oh, and if you want to be a part of it, the choice is yours. What you determine in you today, the resolution you make between you and God today, this day, not tomorrow, not next Sunday, not six months from now. Oh, I can't wait till six months from now when things change. Expect change now. Not tomorrow. Today. God wants to change you today. He wants to break every chain off of you today. Hallelujah. Amen. Ooh. The Lord is going to raise up a remnant church like we've never seen before, like it's supposed to be. The first church was amazing. You notice how their whole life was focused on doing the will of God? They got together, they prayed, they broke bread, they had communion, they fellowshiped, they worshiped. The Holy Spirit said, send them to, send them to, send them to. Thousands a day were getting saved. They didn't have internet, they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have Wi-Fi. Amazing how easily they communicated with masses of people without the technology today. So what happened, church? I talked to a young man in the store this morning that works there. And he was talking about all these communication things. You're going to walk into a store and you're going to have a card in your pocket. The things you put in the cart are all going to be tagged already. You're going to walk through a scanner and that's going to tell you how much you owe. And it'll probably automatically take it out of your account. That's coming. Because they already have places where you can walk through things and it scans what you have. And they know what's on you. Yep. Guess what? You know what that does? It eliminates a lot of jobs. I don't mind technology. But we have no interaction with our fellow man anymore. Yes. People are better at sitting there with an iPhone, an iPad, or a computer, and they're afraid to leave their house and go share some Jesus with someone. No, no, and no. Those days are over. God's called you to get out of the buildings and into the public square again. And what you said about the speaking part, that's in here today. Everything you sang and said today, it's in the sermon today, okay? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah 10. Now this is the Lord saying He's going to restore a remnant. 
Assyria, after they purged and got burned up, there was only a small amount left. <laughs> and he called it his remnant. See, I told you, the fire of God's going to fall on his church and he's going to purify it. We're his bride. We're married to him. And he owns us. This ain't like a, a contract you have when you get married with a person. You got a contract with God. And he don't break it. He owns you. We're bride, but we're owned. You don't own your spouse. I don't own my wife. God does. It keeps us happy that way. Amen. Um, but it's so important that you realize this is a resemblance of the church today. When he turned me to this, uh, what was it, Friday morning, I said, what? He said, no, that's the church. I said, I'm going to judge my house first, and it's going to be with fire. I am going to purify it, and there's going to be a remnant church left that walks empowered and guided and directed by the Holy Spirit, period. And, and part of the prophecy she was playing last night was, there's going to be a lot of ministries that are just going to go bye-bye in, in the earth. Because they're doing it to please the ways of man and not be pleasing to God. They are not led by the Spirit, they are led by their flesh and their little programs of do's and don'ts. Those days are over if you want to walk in the power and the authority of His name. Because if you're walking in the power and the authority of His name, you know your name's not at stake. His is. It's not about our name. It's not about what you sign at the bottom of a check. It's about His name and His name alone that we go forward. Amen? In Isaiah 10, just verses 20 to 23, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as have escaped the house of Jacob will never again depend upon him who defeated them. They depended upon the enemies of God to survive. Those days are over for the church. Your dependence is no longer on man but on God alone. Period. But will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. Amen. <laughs> the remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob. See, he's even going to restore Jacob in this. To the mighty God. For through your people, O Israel, be a, though your people, O Israel, be a sand of the sea, a remnant of them will return. The destruction decreed shall overflow with righteousness. See, he's going to re replace everything with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts will make a determined end in the midst of all the land. You need to be as determined as God to fulfill your destiny. He's, that's a resolution. God is resolute. He has a strong resolve, a lot more than ours. He chases every lost soul down until they beg for mercy. Amen? But you should have the same determination. You should be making a resolution today. Lord, I, I'm making a resolution. I'm going to be as determined as you are to fulfill my destiny. That'll kick all the nonsense out of your life that quick because God won't let it touch you anymore. We have to really be aware of what's outside these doors. Keeping your guard up. Mike and I were talking about it. Terry said it today. Don't let your guard down, especially in the days we're in right now. Fellowship with your brethren. Be praying with people during the week. Be in the Word every day. You need to be so close to Jesus if you want to be part of the remnant church that He is going to raise up. We're not raising it up. We're just vessels that He's going to do it through. See, the remnant he's raising up is going to be those people that take God's word serious and say, Lord, you called us to be holy as you are. You want power in your life? Make a determination today. You want to be holy like God is holy. And he'll burn out everything in you that's not of him. Believe me. Say, Lord, I want to be holy like you are holy like your word says. You say that 600 times or what's up between the Old and the New Testament. And if you want that, you're going to have to determine that because everything is a choice. A lot of posts lately about your future is the choices you make. I made all bad choices the first 37 years. That didn't turn out well. <laughs> Jesus rescued me. Amen. And some of the bad choices I made since I was saved, He had to rescue me from those because I was leaning on my understanding and not His. I was trying to make my way and not follow His. You no longer can make your own plans because I don't... And I don't say just be ignorant of the world around you. i got a game plan every day. I get up, I pray, I seek God's face. Okay, here I am. What are you to do with me? What are your plans? What was written before a day on the earth that you want to do with me? That's really giving up any of yourself. You, that, that means you've given full, total control of your existence into the hands who designed you and made you. You want to be pressure-free in your life? Die to yourself and what you plan for the rest of your days on this earth and let Him have you.
And then you'll really see the hand of God put on your shoulder guiding you. And you'll see him go before you and make a way where there's not one. Remember, we are called to an impossible life that no man can do apart from the power of God in them. You're not called to something man can do. You can't. You can't save anybody. We've been given the power to heal, but the healer lives in you. It comes out. <laughs> Suzanne was in there. She said, man, I've been fighting this thing for a few days. She was going to leave. I said, no, we need to pray for you now. Boom. And she was all better. How about that? Amen. See what I'm saying? John got put on his heart to pray for a young girl that gave 24 hours to live. God said, John, pray. He started praying. I can't imagine that young girl's anointing that she has for a healing ministry. Oh, man, death was knocking at that baby's door. And guess what? Death has lost its sting. The grave has no power. So guess what? The name of Jesus went and visited. See, he prayed to a girl he didn't even see. Yet he sent his word and healed her and delivered her from all his instructions. Amen. That's the power you have. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Start exercising it in Jesus' name. If you want to be the remnant of church, then you need to decide it. Not me. I made my decision. I remember Carmen when he came out and he was big. I was a baby Christian. All those songs he sang. Oh man, I got they got me going. <laughs> I was a young Christian. I'd have the headphones on. I'd be walking the dog, praying in tongues, waking up neighborhoods. It was great. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Who is that man outside? <laughs> Hide the kids, honey. Some crazy guy screaming in heaven out there. The dog's just walking along going, I'm just, I'm just along for the ride. The dog was even looking at me strange. But the thing is, though, people should look at you strange because you've got such a confidence in who you are in Christ. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a new remnant coming. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Don't go there. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 and 7. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Watch verse 7. A time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. You need to determine today that you're going to give God permission to tear everything out of you that He didn't put in you. And He's going to replace it with the fullness of who He is in you. And it is a time to speak. It is a time for the church to rise up and stop bowing to the government and yes. start bowing to Almighty God yes. and make your voices heard. Yes. Like I said, don't ever let anybody tell you you can't speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to defend it here that will more than slay your enemies for you. Amen. Don't waste your time with your enemies because that's God's job. We pray for them to get saved. I pray for the government to get saved. But that's between them and the Lord. My job is to lift up the name of Jesus and to proclaim the gospel of salvation through what Christ did on the cross. No one is ever going to stop that word coming out of my mouth. I don't know about you, but there's a remnant church that's going to have the boldness of a lion like never before, amen? amen? And that needs to be put into you. But it can't be put into you until you let Him tear out everything that's not of Him. Are you really willing to have God circumcise your heart and your plans and everything that you had for the rest of your life on your agenda? Are you? Because that's a question you need to ask yourself today. Like I said, when you study for this, before I get here on Sunday, I've been in these scriptures for hours and stuff as he's changing it around, and he's asking me the same question he's saying to you this morning. So I've had to settle some things this week with the Lord. He said, you've got to give that all to me. There can be nothing left of your desires that are of you. Nothing. The desires of your heart must be the ones that I'm allowed to put in there, not yours. People don't want to hear that. But it says, I can have my desires. I said, if your desires aren't his, you ain't getting them. You won't get them. Too many people run around and quote that verse, Oh, I'm going to have the desires of my heart because I delight in the Lord. No, you don't. you got a wish list. You don't have a prayer list. It's all about things. Your life must be so centered and grounded and rooted in Jesus Christ that it just takes you over. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember nor ponder the things of old. God will do a new thing. 
He will bring it to pass. Amen? Don't even ponder the things of old. You're not to look back anymore. Paul says it in Philippians, what's that? In 3, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forward to those things that are ahead, for the upper call of the prize of God in Christ Jesus. If Paul could not look back at his past being a murderer, just saying, persecuted the church, had people stoned, stood there and watched Stephen get stoned to death, and was jumping up and down with joy, going, yeah, they're all throwing that call, and Paul's just standing there going, well, he was Saul at the time, going, oh yeah, this is good. This is good. They're stoning Stephen to death. He approved of all that. And he was on the way to go kill some more. And then he had a visit from Jesus. Amen. He had a visit from Jesus. Amen. 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 God cannot do a new thing in your life if, unless you let Him tear out everything that's old. Your thinking, your walking, your talking, your believing has to change. And it will not change because if anything is of the old... Like I said, everybody wants these old revivals. They talk about Azusa Street and all the other ones and the great revival, the Welsh revival and this revival. God bless them. There were great things that happened. Millions of people got saved. But you know what? They don't mean a hill of beans today. You know why? Because the revival that's starting right here, right now, that's already on the earth, is the last one. Before our king returns. That was also prophesied in Azusa Street. So start focusing on where we're going and the new thing that God's going to do with His remnant church in signs, wonders, and miracles. God says, I'm going to establish you and you're going to know your mind because I'm going to be working with you, confirming my word in you. I'm going to, con I'm going to confirm it. Mark the 16th chapter. So unless you're every torn apart and you're surgically changed into the image and likeness of the Son, then you're not going out for the will of God. You're going out because of you. When we go out and God ministers through you, you just say, thank you, Jesus, and you keep going. He touches somebody else, thank you, Jesus, you keep going. Thank you, Jesus, you keep going. Because he always gave thanks to the Father. How about that? He set the example of how to, nothing stopped Jesus from his destiny, and that was the cross. Nothing stopped him. Not, not lies, not persecutions, not slanders, not attacks, not plots not schemes, not disrespect. Nothing stopped Christ from getting to that cross because He was determined to do the Father's will. Amen. He was determined to fulfill His destiny, leaving heaven, walking sinless, going here, going to the tomb, arising up to the right hand of the Father again. He was determined to fulfill His purposes for which the Father sent Him to this earth. Are you determined today to fulfill your destiny? Because there's going to be a great tearing in your soul and your heart. He's going to take out everything that He did not plant in you. Anything that's of the old nature must be removed. You are a new creation. You have a new nature. You have the nature of the Son of God in you who died and rose again. I must die this way on the cross so my spirit will come fill you. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's time for the church to awaken. Amen. Amen. Mm. That has to happen before you get your new clothes. You ladies were in the back. I said it's time for some new clothes this year. New Year's resolution. Yeah. No, don't get excited about shopping. I told them before. No, 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 no. You're going to get new clothes. But it's going to be heavenly clothes. Which has so much more glory. So much more power. Ooh, the whole world's going to see how you're dressed by God. Oh, it's coming. You're going to feel it. I prayed it over Diane Chumley yesterday in, in Mom's restaurant. She almost fell to the floor. Her shoulders went, whoa! Because God put a robe on her right there. See, no matter where you go, I don't care what store you're in, what gas station you're in, you, you, you're doing whatever you're doing, wherever you are, whether it's a library, a store, get whatever. Be available. Because that woman got a fresh anointing and she needed it yesterday. Because you never know the words you give somebody, how important they are to that person. See, because I, I got a tweet hours later how important those words are because you don't even know. Remember, when God gives you words for somebody, give them. You just may have just set them free from something that's been hanging on them for years. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. Don't ever limit God's Spirit from giving words to people because His words are going to set that captive free and bring healing to their heart, mind, and soul. Amen? Amen. In Galatians 6, so many of you have been so faithful, the ones that are still here. 
We've been around this, how long have we been here? Five and a half years in this building. That being said, this next verse is so important because we can miss our biggest blessing by one day. I heard a man, I don't remember who it was, he came to speak at a, a church I was at in Santa Monica, and he literally talked about this whole sermon, and he looked, and, uh, and everybody in the place put their heads down. He said, so many of you in here are about ready to stop praying and interceding for something you've been doing for a long, long time. And you think you've been waiting and waiting so long. He was kind of put down to all of us. Because <laughs> it was like, wow. He says, but you're being prepared to receive God's best for you. Because He doesn't bring second best. Don't miss it by one day. Don't throw, you know, in the old boxing matches, they had to tell the white towel in the corner, and the fighter had enough, and they throw the towel in. No, no, no. Your best days are ahead of you, not behind you. What was behind was the wisdom, so you never want to go back. So you could fulfill your destiny. Don't give up by one day. You could miss such a big blessing. Don't ever compromise. Don't be pulled or swayed. Yesterday, someone tried to sway Suzanne from, from, from her journey. It's amazing how it's going to come at you. And it comes at you usually through people you know. Sometimes the ones right next to you. Don't let anything sway you from your journey. Determine in your heart today that you're going to fulfill the destiny God created for you. Not for the one next to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Galatians 6, 9 and 10. And let us not grow weary. Don't shrink back while doing good. For in due season... We shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to the household of God, of faith, the household of faith. Remember something, focus on your, your immediate family in Christ Jesus, because they're your family members. They're your family members, amen? We went to go pray for a pastor the other day, and he said, you're all my family. He's had a lot of family come and see him when he got sick. Now he's getting a whole lot better. Probably won't see him again. Because he looked up at all these men of God that came to be with him the other day and encouraged him and pray over him again. He's already getting stronger. Hallelujah. It was only cancer. Got to go. Um, so guess what? He goes, you're truly my family. Having them here was great, but a lot of them are not followers of the Lord. So it was nice to see kids, grandkids and stuff, but if they're not walking with the Lord, here's a man who's been serving God most of his life, realized... They're really not my family. My family's here in this house with me right here, right now. See, it's the blood bought family through the blood of Jesus Christ. Those are the ones you look to help first. And then after that, you got, because one guy was there, he's wanting to go out and feed everybody and help all these hungry people and homeless. I said, if you went and asked most of the homeless people out there, 95% of them chose to be there. They made a choice. I worked with the homeless for from 91 to 97 in California, and I learned that most of them were more than able to go work. But life didn't go well, so they gave up. And they'd rather live in the streets than they would going out and making a productive life for themselves. Shame, shame, shame. No. You, you work with inside out in the body of Christ. You help the household of faith first. Then we do outreach. We give outreach. We do stuff. We're always helping people. But be wise in where you plant your seed. Amen? Amen. Oh, it's about to get good. This Remember something in 2 Timothy, it says, be ready in and out of season. That's that word from Ecclesiastes, in a season. Remember what God has shown so many people. This is the last season before His coming. You won't have <laughs> seasons are for spring, summer, winter, fall. The season you're in is the great move of God to save billions of souls. So this season is going to happen until His return. There will be no more breaks in between. There's not going to be a high and a low. It's going to be a constant flow of that explosion of the Holy Spirit. What we saw on your Friday night when we were praying, when I saw the light coming up from the ground and the light coming down from heaven, it met on the earth and it exploded out. And when I shared that with the ones working next door uh, this morning, we almost all fell over in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> See, because I'm just sharing the joy God put in me about this year that we're in. It's a year of victory. God always leads us in triumph. Amen? If you have your Bibles, turn to Zechariah, the third chapter. I'm going to start talking about the new clothes you're going to have. Oh, yeah. Amen. I told you, New Year's resolution. It's time for shopping for new clothes. Yeah. But you're not going to have to go shopping. You're going to be dressed. 
It's time to let someone else dress you spiritually. Amen? Zechariah 3, we're just going to read 1 to 4. You go read 1 through 10 because there's a lot in there. There's about the branch who is the Messiah. All that's in that chapter. But these first four verses are all about what's going on. And this is actually, this is the tearing of the old away. And who does it for you? Amen? Amen. Verses 1 to 4, Zechariah, third chapter. <coughs> Then he showed me Joshua the high priest. Now this is a different Joshua from the book of Joshua. This was the high priest of Israel. Remember, Zechariah got everything in visions. Amen? Amen? Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. When you go back and study it, this is about the sins of Israel. Okay, so Satan's accusations were accurate. They were true when he was saying. But watch what happens when the Lord intervenes. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. So he's, here he is accusing Israel of their sins, the high priest Joshua, their representation, and the Lord rebuked them. He didn't let him even accuse them, because he's the accuser of the brethren, amen? Um is not a brand plucked from the fire. Now Joshua was clothed in filthy garments. That's our sins, folks. And was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him, your sins. And said to him, See, I have removed your iniquity from you. And I will clothe you with rich robes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God knows how to dress us. Amen. He took all your sins away. All. Threw them away. There's no record. And said, yeah, I'm going to clothe you with rich robes. You're going to see what those rich robes are in a minute. Amen. You need to see yourself so dressed in royalty. Because you belong to a royal priesthood. A holy nation of believers called to be a holy people doing what's pleasing to your Father in heaven. See, because if you're carrying around your old clothes, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. You know what? You took the new garments He gave you and you threw them in the garbage. You are not an old sinner. You are not an old person. You are a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen. You have new clothes. You have new garments. Amen? Amen. Gets even better. Watch what you're really clothed in. Revelation 3 5. You don't need to go there. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. He who overcomes, how do we overcome? By the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. I will not blot, and watch, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. See, everybody starts out on their way to heaven. It's a choice where you spend eternity. Stop letting people tell you God sends people to hell. No, he doesn't. He never does. He can't. You send yourself if you don't receive the power of the blood of the Lamb. You become an overcomer by the word of the testimony of what Christ has done and by the blood of the Lamb, which gives you white garments, royalty, pure holy robes wrapped around you, who is Christ Himself. Amen? But I will confess His name before my Father and before His angels. You have to see yourself today as clothed in royalty. Because if you don't, he hasn't tore out of you what's of the old. You still got old stuff. That when you go back to Ecclesiastes, when I open up and he says, I must tear it out. Let me tear off of you what was. Let me tear it out of your heart. <laughs> Join the rest of us, Suzanne. We all struggle with because when God gets intimate with you, it gets personal. Because you've had stuff in here, and it takes a root. And now God says, Give it to me. And you're going, yeah, but I've had it for so long. It's like your blankie as a kid, as a baby. You don't want to give up that blankie. It's like me with my old ribbed t-shirts that my wife always wants to throw out. <laughs> throw the thing out! I'm getting better. I'm starting to throw some old ribbed stuff out. But it's so comfortable. <laughs> so it doesn't have any sleeves or anything else. It's got a few holes. So what? It's comfy. <laughs> but we got to let God tear that stuff off 
that has made us comfortable before. Oh. <clears throat> if what's made you comfortable is still attached to you, it needs to be torn off of you. If you have a comfort zone in your life right now, it needs to go away. And you need to... God will do it for you. He says, I will put rich robes on you. I've removed your iniquity. You didn't even do it yourself. He did. He's got to be the dresser of who you are every day. But you've got to see yourself this way. Let Him burn you up today with fire. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> Isaiah 61.10. Let's talk about your clothing some more. Remember, white garments. Let me show you what the white garments are. The Word is so clear on how God sees us and how He sees us and the way He dressed us after you got washed in the blood. The problem is you're carrying around old stuff, old thinking, old thoughts, the way you think of yourself. Shame on us for thinking less of ourselves than how God thinks so highly of us. He thinks so highly He sent His Son to die for us. Why don't you think that of yourself? Why not? He does. He, it's, there's so much proof in here how much He loves us and what He's done for yeah. us. Hallelujah. How are you going to see yourself dressed in royalty today? Rich robes, white garments that Christ Himself adorned you with as His bride. Oh, start seeing this as a bride today. God's touching some hearts right here, right now. Give it to them. And let them heal you from it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Let them tear that stuff out. Yeah, it's going to hurt because it's been a place of, of suffering for so long. It's such a negative, it's a negative spirit. Get rid of it today. Let Jesus have it now and let him burn it out. Because he didn't plant that in you. It didn't come from him. It came from the devil. And the devil has no right to you anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 61.10 in Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. We're to be joyful. Hallelujah. My God has done everything for us. Oh, hallelujah. Be joyful today. He has clothed me. Here's that word clothed again. He has clothed me with what? Garments of salvation. He has covered me with what? The robe of righteousness. Rich robes, white garments. You are dressed. And when you're dressed, what are you dressed with? The power of those robes. Heavenly robes. Because He sees you as heavenly people. Here, it'll be here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. He took Jesus. Himself in the form of a robe and covered you with it. Because He is righteous. He is holy. He is pure. He is true. You're clothed with all that God is. You're clothed with it today. Father, I thank You for robes Ooh, falling Jesus. on everybody yes, today. Lord. You heal their hearts and souls. So they see themselves as the redeemed of you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. His blood is that powerful. Receive it today. Don't fight this. Let Him have it. Let Him walk up behind you right now and put robes on you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I just pray a fresh anointing from heaven right now. Fall upon everybody in this house. Let them see themselves as royalty as you do, as children of the Most High God, clothed with Christ Jesus, rich robes of righteousness, garment of salvation, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, 12 to 21. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. He who became sin, who knew no sin, so you become the righteousness of God in Christ. You're clothed and made the righteous Son of God. You're as righteous as Jesus is. He's yeah. clothed you with that. Ooh, That's how the Father sees you. Oh, hallelujah. Boy, if that don't make your heart happy, why are you not joyful in the Lord today? Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm Jesus. preaching myself all but happy today. Somebody get excited. <laughs> I'm just excited about the new year. Oh, yeah, me too. Because as he was showing me this today, you don't really see yourself as royalty yet, but you will. And when I started confessing it the last three, four days studying this, I could feel myself changing. I could feel my step get a little more hop in it. Yeah. I said, wow, I'm, I'm royalty. I'm dressed with Jesus. Now, I preach it all the time, but it has to be in your heart and your mind. You have to determine, you do, that that's who you are in Christ. That's what He's made you. Then it's easier to receive. Yes. Yes. See, I've done nothing to receive these robes. 
He has. I'm the benefit of what he did because I'm in the receiving mode of, of a good, good father that sent his son to clothe me with royalty. Amen? Amen. You know how powerful his robes are? Sin can't touch it. No weapon of the enemy can touch it. No plague, no pestilence can befall you because you're dressed in robes of righteousness, garments of salvation. You are clothed with Christ Jesus who broke all sickness and power and poverty and the death and the sting of death the, and, the, and the empty tomb. All this stuff, you're clothed with everything that he did. So that can't have you anymore. You are free to walk new in a new creation. You're a whole new being in Christ. And until you see yourself as a new creation, you're not going to realize what you're dressed in. You know why stuff gets a hold of us? Because we don't realize how dressed we are. We put up with the lies of the devil all the time. He's a punk and he lied. He has no right to you. Jesus disarmed him. He put the devil under your feet. And he needs to stay there in yeah. Jesus' name. We are the triumphant church. And until we see ourselves that way, Oh man, the church should be walking with a joyful smile every day going, we got victory over this whole world in Jesus' name. You've overcome it. The overcomer lives in me. I've never overcome anything. I didn't deliver myself from alcohol and drugs and all the other sick things I did in the first 37 years. My overcomer came to take care of that. God delivered me from the world. I didn't like the world. I hated what I was doing, but I needed a deliverer. Because my human strength who tried to clean himself up, I don't know, three, four, every time I passed out and died a few times, okay, a few overdoses, guess what? I get up, I'm never going back again. I knew God was real. If you help me get out of this, I'll be just fine. Two days later, I was worse than I started. The next time. It's amazing how merciful our God is to put up with such an evil person that I was for so long because he determined that I'd have a good end. God determines a good ending for every one of our lives. God determines like He did with Abraham. He died a man full of years. He wasn't sick. He wasn't tired. He was still married at 120, making children. He led a long, healthy life, old Abraham did. And he didn't have all the vitamins and stuff we got today, okay? I'm just saying. Just saying. With God, all things are possible, amen? Amen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You need Jesus to be your vitamin. I take vitamins. I take all kinds of healthy stuff. We do. That's it. it keep, you take care of the temple. I need to get a little bit smaller temple, but that's okay. I'm working on it. Holidays are usually rough around the midsection. Amen? Amen. Had to say no to a few goodies this week, but I'm, I'm a work in progress. Those new clothes that you see yourself in. Hmm. Remember Ecclesiastes, he must tear off all your old garments. If you're still holding yourself accountable for mistakes, the devil told you you had to. If you say, I made this mistake, that mistake, this mistake, that mistake, the Lord's going to come correct you for that because in his eyes you didn't make any. He forgives what? All of your sins. If you made a mistake and you repented, it's gone. See, you don't see yourself dressed the way God does because you're still holding yourself accountable for something that there's no record of in heaven. I'm sorry, we're all forgiven saints of God in Christ Jesus. He doesn't just forgive some of us. That isn't for a select group of people. No, it's not. It's for all who ask for forgiveness. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, so if you're still holding yourself accountable for what you did, well, then where's the power of the blood of the Lamb? We're overcomers by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. So you're not going to see yourself as royalty if you're still feeling guilty about something. Oh, guess what? God declared you not guilty. Right here. If every sin in your life and every mistake you made has been given to Christ, there's no record of it. So why are you keeping a record? Why are you going, I made all these mistakes? I was talking to a young man months ago and he's sitting there going, I made all these mistakes. I did blah, 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 blah. I said, that's all you did? Yeah. I said, why are you reminding yourself of what you did wrong? Because when you remind yourself of what you've done wrong, you're liable to do it again. You've opened the door to being seduced to the same mistakes that got you in trouble the first time. How about that? Yeah, it's true. 
I can stand before you right now because I got up under the blood of Jesus this morning. I got no sin in my life that I know of. If there's something hidden, God will show me. He's good at that. <laughs> okay, but the thing is, He does it in love. He says, I have no record of any wrongs because you don't have any in my sight. I rebuked the devil. I did. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. I always put in small letters. The, the computer tries to put Satan in capital. Oh, no, you don't, devil. You can't be no capital. You don't deserve a capital letter. You've been destroyed. Yeah. I just like saying that. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is good. Turn to Ephesians 4th chapter. 4th chapter. Of Ephesians. Verses 20 to 24. Remember, you choose, you determine, you make a resolution. I'm going to be clothed. See, God gives us the power and the authority to stay clothed, to stay in right standing, because He did all the work. You're just receiving His work on you. What He did. Let Him clothe you. Let Him keep you clothed. And don't let anything touch your clothing that's not of God. Amen? Amen. You are holy vessels. You weren't made for unholiness. You were made for holy, righteous living. Right, Connor? Amen? Amen. Amen. See, He knows... Amen. Thank you, buddy. <clears throat> Verses 20 to 24. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard Him, and have been taught by Him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which was created by who? God. According to God. In true righteousness and holiness. Oh, That's why I tell people I'm going to be fresh and flourishing. You know why? Because my old man, that corrupted thing, died. How do you stay fresh and flourishing? I'm a new man. How's he, how's he going to keep give me wings as eagles? I'll run and not grow tired because the new man can. The old man died. I'm never going to get old because I'm going to live forever. Now, this is going to go away someday when my days are up. But there's no reason why I can't go fresh and flourishing the last day I'm here on this earth. There is no, because the book tells me my old man is dead. He corrupted. He's dead. He's not allowed to come out of the ground. I'm a new man now. I'm one with God in Christ. So now that I'm washed and I'm robed and I'm new clothed, the old corrupted man, he dead. Yes. My new man is an eternal man, Jesus. an eternal creature, clothed with glory, filled with glory, healed and whole in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you don't have to accept what doctors tell you. I don't care what anybody says. I, he told me, don't believe the lie of the devil. Yes, your body does get older, but your old man gets older. Your new man is eternal. So see yourself as fresh and flourishing, and you will be all the days of your life. Because nowhere does it say you have to die old and in a bed and decrepit and sick and broken and disgusted and crippled up. Nowhere does it say that in here. What it tells me in here is, I'm going to be satisfied with a long life. I'm going to be fresh and flourishing. My leaf is never going to wither. And I, my new man knows that. So I don't let the old man come in and say something contrary to what God has promised in the new covenant. Amen? Amen. So see yourself as a new covenant believer. See your old self as dead. He's dead. Don't listen to him. Don't talk to him. And don't agree with him. God was telling me this morning, you be on guard. You take every thought that enters your mind so captive right now. If it doesn't exactly line up with Amen. what I've promised you and who I am, kick it down. Yes. Because the deceiver's going to come with so many words, and he's going to really, because it says the great falling away, it's happening as we speak in the church. Because they've listened to so many doctrines, but they haven't listened to the Holy Spirit because they don't have ears to hear. They, they want their ears tickled by all this happy feet stuff. i got happy feet right now. I can dance. Amen. I don't know much of a dancer, but we'll leave that alone. <laughs> we were watching some people on the Times Square thing last night on TV a little bit, watching the fireworks. Disco. Yeah, they were trying. <laughs> Wife hoped me to not dance like that. Um, it was sad. But the thing is, but the thing is, if you see yourself today as when you got saved, you became a whole new creation. That old person has no right to you anymore. 
the lies it believed about itself, the deceptions you believed, what you were told, who you are, what you are, what you'll amount to, you are no longer the person they spoke to died. The person that was spoken those lies to has died, according to the Word of God. According to this book, that person's dead. So don't agree with where you've been. Agree with who you are now. And then you'll be able to see yourself as clothed with a heavenly robe and garments, clothed with Christ Himself. Then the world can't touch you anymore. Nothing can touch Jesus. He took everything of the world and nailed it to the cross. Okay? It can't touch you after that if you realize who you are. Because if you really want to walk free from the temptations of this world, temptations only have power if you give them power. If you listen to them. If you entertain them in your mind, they will go to your heart. Now they've got a hold of you. See, that's the tearing away that he talked about. There's a time for the tearing, and the time is now for everything, you, every lie you believed, everything of your old nature. It gets ripped out of you by God, and let him have the wholeness so he can replace it with himself. So you can see yourself as blessed and highly favored, as adored children of God. He cherishes us. And He so yearns right now to bless you and to heal you and make you whole and one with Him. But if you don't see yourself as lovable, how's God going to love you? If you don't see yourself as being worthy before God, you're worthy. You know why? The blood has made you worthy. Don't ever say, I'm not worthy. That's another lie of the devil. Yes, you are worthy. The blood has made you worthy to receive those rich robes that God is going to put on you today. The blood of Jesus Christ has made you worthy. Amen? See, in your robes, they should have certain characteristics in them robes. Colossians 3, we'll finish with that. I had another two hours of teaching, but he told me to leave all that off. I think a whole bunch of stuff out last night. I said, I'm liking this. Yeah, you are, but leave it alone. You'll be there till next midnight. I said, no, well. I won't do Jesus. that to you. Much as I like talking about Jesus, I know people got things to do today, amen? Because I want you to take what you get in here and I want you to take it to people. Tell them they can be a new creation in Christ. Tell them they can ha get rid of all the dirty, old, filthy sins in their life and all their old, dirty clothes and they can be washed away and be remembered no more by a mighty God that loves you endlessly and, and immeasurably. And, and just... We need to start really sharing what Christ has done again. He's your testimony. You don't have one. Your testimony is what Christ has done. I've done that teaching a bunch of different directions. What's your testimony? Jesus saved me and set me free. I couldn't do it for myself. Like I said, we were talking the other night, and I told my wife, I said, I walked in that church that day more than ready to meet my Maker. I deserve judgment. I deserve eternal damnation. He not only didn't condemn me to death and hell, He saved me, delivered me, and now has used me for 25 and a half years for His glory. So if there's hope for me, there's hope for everybody. If I'm forgiven, one, my sins can be erased with the blood of Jesus. Oh man, you people be a piece of cake. Oh, I'm telling you. Amen, <laughs> amen. I'm just saying, it's one sin's no worse than the next in God's eyes. Although the sins against the flesh are. So guess what? It's, it's time that... You really come into the fullness of the blessed life that God has for you. When He's saying, I came, because I came to destroy the devil, the works of the devil, I came to give you an abundant life. An abundant life. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. Healed, whole, and restored. God's not going to dress you up and then not take care of you. Hello? They're quite a guy. He's not going to put his robes on you and then throw you out on the street. Is he? That would be an insult to who he is. He can't even do that. He says, come let me clothe you. And on top of that, let me provide for you. Let me care for you. Let me protect you. Let me be madly in love with you. Fear nothing, for I am with Jesus. you and I am for you. Let me lead you and guide you. Let me go before you and make every crooked way straight. Let me take care of every one of your needs. Let me set you free from every sickness and every bondage and everything that's had a hold of you your whole life. I'm going to deliver you from everything so you can walk in the newness of life that I have for you. But you've got to want the life He has for you and not your own. 
That's why so many Christians walk around miserable, disgusted, depressed. I don't feel good. Oh, I got this, I got that. You know why you got that? Because you're doing it your way. Amen. Told you this ain't Burger King. It's all Christ or no Christ. That's all there is anymore. Amen. We'll finish with Colossians 3. Your New Year's resolution. Remember something in those roles who Christ is, is all of his characteristics. Healer, Redeemer, Provider, Comforter, all those things. He's El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. That's who you're clothed with. There are no limitations for our God. Amen? Amen. Colossians 3, verses 12 to 14. This is so good. God's Word is so rich. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, you are holy and beloved children. Amen. Doesn't that make your heart happy? Yes. It should. Yes. You're holy and beloved by Almighty, holy, righteous God. Jesus, Jesus. That should give you a happy heart right there. Oh, now watch, though. Watch what part of the robe is. There's certain characteristics in your robes that you're supposed to be wearing, okay? Because Remember, we represent Christ out here. Put on tender mercies. Put on kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has any complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Chapter 13, the love chapter. Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love doesn't envy, it's not jealous, it doesn't exalt itself. It's all those things we just... Remember something that's in those robes He put on you. It's all His nature and all that He is. So if you want to wear those robes and you put on the new man every morning when you get up, but it should never come off. You should go to bed with it. It's like your blankets, okay? When you get into bed and I think, think of who's really your clothing when you get under those blankets. That'll give you a peaceful night's sleep. You're holy and beloved children Amen. of Almighty God. That's the times we're living in. Jesus. People, though, they want the blessed life, but they, they refuse to find out who they are. Because they haven't let God tear out of them, circumcise their heart and soul of what's old. Everything that's old in you needs to go. And it needs to go now. You want to work, walk in perfect love, peace, joy, and happiness in the Holy Ghost? You're going to give Him permission to tear everything out of you like I said, I kept getting these last few days, so many people have, been, have believed so many lies about themselves. It started when you were children, just like me. And it's taken God a lot of years to get that stuff out of my thought process. Sometimes it still tries to come back. I still struggle with it some days. That's why He told me this morning, take every thought captive immediately. Don't even let it register. As soon as you hear something that you know isn't my voice, kick it down, throw it down, and keep throwing it down. You know, that's how you punish the devil. You stay in joy. You stay in peace. You stay in the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. You walk in the power of His love. Faith works by the power of His love, not by anything of you. Hallelujah. It's faith in His faithfulness and not faith in yourself. Because yes, it's God alone that is everything to you. So it is so time for the church to wake up and be who we're called to be. Beloved and holy children of God. Blessed and highly favored children of God. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, healed, whole, blessed, and prospered. When you see yourself that way, that's what your life will be. That's the life of Christ. That's the life of Christ. That's what He came to give you back. How are you going to have the blessings of Abraham if you don't believe they're yours? Come away to guess. How are you going to believe the blessings of Abraham are yours by your faith in Jesus Christ if you don't believe you have a right to it? It's part of your inheritance. That's why I'm going to tell Christians we should own every business on the planet. They don't belong to countries. They don't belong to people. It belongs to God. And you're His joint heir. Amen. Christians need to wake up and what you don't know, God will teach you. If you're lacking anywhere in wisdom or knowledge or understanding, God says, ask and I'll give it to you. Amen. It's that simple. Ask and you'll receive. Amen. That was always my excuse. Well, I can't go to the world. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. No, he says you can't, but in me you can if you let me teach you some stuff. God knows some things. And if we would let him equip us spiritually, if we would let him today 
Say, Lord, I want everything tore out of my heart, soul, mind, and subconscious that you did not put there, that keeps me from seeing myself as you see me. Here I am today. I make a New Year's resolution. I want to be fully clothed by you and nothing else but you. And then you watch your life change. Thank you, Jesus. But you have to make a determination. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till Wednesday night Bible study or Friday night worship practice or next Sunday. Do it now. Because God's here right now, right here today. He wants to touch you now. He wants to take all your dirty old stuff off and out of you and put on fresh new robes so when you leave here today, you can feel the refreshing of the new oil and the new wine that He promises to give us. I'm not talking alcohol. I'm talking that sweetness of His oil, that new wine that only flows from heaven. Amen? Amen. That's where we're at today in history in America. Amen. Oh, there's a bright, shiny day coming. The Proverbs say our future is going to get brighter and brighter and brighter unto the noonday sun for the righteous that are of God in Christ. Mm. Jesus. Well, I feel really good. Amen. Just saying. The Word of God should encourage you. You should feel renewed every time you read it. Right, Connor? Right. Amen. That's my man. Man to God. Yeah, that's you, buddy. You're awesome. You're awesome. God thinks you're awesome. God loves you, huh? And we love you too. You may only be six years old, but you're still a young man of God. And God's got an anointing on you. And He's going to fulfill His purposes for you. And He's going to use you mightily. You're going to touch lives everywhere you go in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, you carry the presence of a holy, righteous God that lives within you, Carmen. You're going to help set captives free everywhere you go. You got a kind heart, too. Amen. You're awesome. Jesus loves you so deeply. So, Father, we just thank you for Carmen. What an awesome young man of God he is, Father. Keep your hand upon him. Give him wisdom beyond his years. Give him the spirit of discernment so he sees clearly who's who and what's what. Keep him on that highway of holiness all the days of his life. We just give him over into your hands, Holy Spirit, right now. For you have set aside such an awesome walk for him, Lord. But show him that you are with him every step of the way. I pray a fresh anointing of that evangelistic prophetic call that's on his life. I thank you that he has that bond of his spirit that he's going to encourage and edify and build and touch people's lives everywhere he goes. He's going to bring the joy of the Lord to so many, O oh God. For you set him aside for such a great high calling. I thank you he feels the robes of, of heaven, the rich robes of his protection on him this day in Jesus' name. That come from heaven, not from the world, but give him a deeper relationship with you, Lord, so that he sees he's a chosen vessel by you and you alone. You have set him aside in Jesus' name. Amen. such a good, good Father. You're so merciful, kind, and forgiving. You removed our old filthy rags of our past. They're washed away with the blood of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Today, you just tear everything out of us and off of us that's held us back. We surrender all to you, O oh God. Lord, I just surrender all to you. It's up to each individual to choose this day to determine, to make a New Year's resolution. We want to be clothed with the fullness of those rich robes that can only come from heaven. Because this isn't a, a man-made thing. 
This is a God-made thing. For you alone we are called according to your purposes, for your good pleasure, that we live and move and have our being. So, Father, I do pray a fresh anointing and a fresh blessing upon everybody right now. Let them feel your touch, O oh God. Let them feel the power of the robes that you put on us, those rich robes, the garments of salvation and robes of righteousness that you've clothed us with. Lord Jesus, we're clothed with you. You came to dress us anew for the days of head, so we be that beacon of light and hope. People are going to see that you alone are our provider, our healer, our comforter. They're going to see that the joy of the Lord is truly our strength, as all our hope is in you and you alone. We look to no one else to take care of us but to you, O oh God, for you are the resource of life. You are our life, O oh God. You are the air that we breathe, O oh God. You are our heartbeat, O oh God. And we just thank you this day. Father, in Jesus' name, bless everybody here with abounding grace and peace. Show them not to fear the spiritual surgery that only you can perform. You love us so much. Oh, God, you, you, you know us better than we know ourselves. So, Lord, give everybody the grace to let go of themselves today and make a New Year's resolution to be devoted to you and to you alone. And not our will, but your will be done from this moment forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.